Our next presenter is Dr. Hector Will. Dr. Will is an assistant professor of physics education at Oklahoma City University. He received his PhD in physics education from Purdue University and his undergraduate degree in electronics engineering from the Honduras University of Technology. Dr. Will has worked in designing and implementing technology-supported physics curricula for K-16 settings. He is particularly interested in using model-based, technology-enhanced learning methods to promote embodied cognition in science education. Dr. Will's expertise in data algorithms for software development, physical computing, and machine learning has proven invaluable in developing cutting-edge curricula that engage students and enhance their understanding of complex scientific concepts. His research work focuses on the development of novel curricula for emerging topics in science education. He is particularly interested in quantum computing and machine learning, and his research aims to promote these new technologies in college-level instruction, asking the question, artificial intelligence, are you ready for it? Here, ladies and gentlemen, a big warm round of applause for OCU's own Dr. Hector Will. Good morning. I would like to start with a question. How does your life look like without technology? And I want you to think from the educational aspect. How would you look for resources? How would you write your papers? How would you an educator who calculate and, and uh, get final grades? Well, how can we do this without computers? How can we access the information without books or uh, even cell phones? So you gotta admit, technology has uh, impacted our lives in more ways than we can think of. And it keeps shaping our lives, society, and education. And all these technological revolutions have not come free from controversy. And I wanted to have, start a conversation on how technology has been impacted education and society uh, all so long. I want to start in the Middle Ages. Education was extremely uh, expensive and it was just to the service of the elite. Books, technology was handwritten uh, textbooks, manuscripts that were produced by monks. Education was completely unaccessible. It was very hard to get education during the ages. But with the revolution of a new uh, technological breakthrough, such as the Gutenberg printing press, books were mass produced giving access to everyone to information. This breakthrough, believe it or not, at the time was very controversial due to the fact that there were certain groups interested or fearing that ideas might be elicited and new ideas might oppose to the status quo of the moment, as well as they feared uh, losing control of information. Moving forward, uh, the invention of the calculator made a big impact in education as well. And uh, perhaps some of you are familiar with the picture that I have depicted there. It's a, what we call a logarithmic table. For some of you, it might be a nightmare. But uh, some, some decades ago, this, is the, this was the way to make calculations on trigonometry. There was no calculators whatsoever. You had to use uh, logarithmic uh, tables. And the assessment at that point was not to solve problems, but be able to make calculations. The calculator made it calculations much more efficient so that students focus on problem solving rather than in calculations. This breakthrough also was not free of controversy, as some, some argue that it hinders the process or it permits the interest in performing mental math. Uh, and not focusing on uh, problem solving. Finally, I want to talk about the computer, which brought 
what we call a digital revolution. A digital revolution where information became accessible, we could collaborate, and it was on the, it was on the grasp of our fingers. Now, information is not limited to what the library is able to offer, but it transcends borders, it transcends geographical borders in which you don't need to wait until the next person who's using the book, give it back in order to have access. By clicking and just texting something in your computer, you were able to get information extremely accessible. With that came the controversy that some students just over the pen on computers by just copy pasting sources from Google or from online uh, resources. That brings our topic of the day, artificial intelligence. Are we ready for it? It's coming. Well, some might argue it's already here, which I agree with that. So let's dive into what is AI. AI is just the development of computer systems to uh, perform tasks that require human intelligence. They rely on algorithms, it relies on vast data sets of information and magnificent power computing in order to mimic, yes, human condition. So, something that can think on its own. And you might think, where do I find this technology? Where it, am I exposed to, to, to AI? And the answer is surely yes. If you have a smart device on you, a cell phone, a watch, probably AI is listening to you, understanding you, and giving you suggestions based on what you talk, what you hear, or what you want. So, what is how is AI useful in education? How, how let's let's bring the topic of conversation as how. Uh, we uh, uh, link AI as a new technology, as a breakthrough technology in education. Most of the uh, uh, educational platform systems, they have AI features in which it analyzes students' performance, it determines what are students' strengths, what are students' weaknesses, and in that way, or even the learning style, in that way it tailors the way it designs its curricula so that the student can learn at its own pace. Seems like a great tool. They also have intelligent tutor systems where an AI virtual tutor, not, a, not a, a living person, is able to interact real time with a student when it's having uh, issues or doesn't understand a certain topic. It also allows us to construct new worlds where students can explore the unexplorable. You can immerse a student into the quantum realm so that he can understand or she can understand how the quantum world works in a way that 20 years ago it only worked in the imagination and combined with the mathematical rigor of the time. For educators, you can help us grade students. You, you have automatic grading, you have access to students' records, and in that way you can Forget some of those routine tasks, you can surrender those of routine, uh, routine tasks and focus on nurturing uh, the process of learning for our students. It allows us to work on early intervention uh, so that whenever a student is about to fail, AI can tell us when, when students are at risk so that educators can intervene on time and support those students who are in danger of failing. And also, it's a vast knowledge resource that can produce um, text, it can produce uh, content, and that kind of links into what I want to talk about today, the dawn of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an AI model who is trained to develop and output human-like text. It works through an algorithm that is being fed with tons and tons and tons of information. And I'm talking about article, uh, articles on the internet. I'm talking about content on a website. I'm talking about books. I'm talking about science books, uh, textbooks, literature. Anything that is in the internet has been fed into the uh, chat GPT. So in that sense, uh, the model is able to understand and learn grammar, facts, and it develops reasoning in such a way that with a, a statistical 
framework is able to predict what is the most probable word that goes after another one. Uh, ChatGPT is able to uh, establish a relationship between words and phrases in order to provide coherent responses. So, uh, what is ChatGPT able to do? So, we talked about how it works, so what is it able to do? So, ChatGPT is able to answer questions based on prompts. Okay, so based on the knowledge that it has trained with, it's able to answer any prompt that we uh, request to it. And, and that includes, and that makes it in a human-like way, so it could go from complete sentences, it could go to paragraph, and it, it also is able to uh, generate complete articles. It is also able to offer suggestions if you don't know what to, you don't know what to eat or what movie to see. Uh, ChatGPT is able to provide you input if you provide him provide it with uh, some uh, uh, input. The model can predict and can understand what are your preferences in order and give you a very human-like recommendation. It can summarize lengthy content. Uh, it can break down complex ideas and help you out in understanding something and even uh, changing the, the, the tone of, uh, of a speech for different audiences. It also works as a, as a buddy, as your friend. It engages in open-ended conversation and it, it will be very seemingly, uh, seamless when you're talking with actually a computer. So what are some of the benefits? So I want to talk about Ted. Ted is a student. Uh, Ted could be me. Ted could be you. Ted is just any student. What is he benefiting from by using ChatGPT? First of all, homework assistance. Let's say Ted is, is fixed uh, and stuck at 11 p.m. on a Wednesday night trying to finish his homework and there is no way, there's no, his professor is already asleep there's no tutors at that time and he's struggling with certain concepts. He can go and access to ChatGPT and ask uh, the model to explain him, to guide him, to scaffold him how to solve uh, his homework. That is some of the things that uh, ChatGPT is able to do. It also provides writing support. If you want to brainstorm uh, an idea on something, you want to work on something related to content, you can ask GPT to give you some recommendations to brainstorm what you can develop and what you can work, uh, work or write. Uh, it also checks your grammar and it makes sure it also can improve the coherence uh, and the structure of a paper that you're an, an essay or a paper that you are developing. It provides a personalized learning as an intelligent tutor, as I mentioned before, and it also provides uh, support to educators in the sense that it can. Uh, automatized writing prompts, it can help you develop or design a, uh, an assignment. Um, and it also allows you to uh, recommend you with some uh, cutting edge lesson planning activities. So, let's go back to Ted. So, Ted depends, uh, relies completely on ChatGPT. What are some of the setbacks? What are some of the drawbacks that he's going to start facing if he depends solely and primarily on ChatGPT? First of all, over the on AI. Yes, uh, AI ChatGPT is capable of producing a very high quality uh, essay if you want to. So it, it definitely can work your homework completely. But how is this hindering Ted? Well, he's going to he's going to grow without with lack of critical thinking. He won't have adaptability to uh, work with different assignments. His creativity will be diminished. Okay, it will have what I call conceptual incompetence, which means when you're faced with an ill-structured problem, you don't know what to do because you don't have enough resources in your mind on how to solve or overcome such issue. And yes, point number two, educators, you will aha with me. Yes. ChatGPT, uh, if you misuse it, if you abuse it, you will fall into plagiarism and academic dishonesty. A student cannot claim a uh, work of his own when he only puts a prompt and develops an eight-page uh, essay. That is academic uh, dishonesty. And um, for your information,
solution, ChatGPT uh, uh, doesn't provide accurate information all the time. And with that being said, it, pro it generates fake citations. Okay? Because the model is created just to probabilistically say what is the next word that follows. So that means that not necessarily if you provide a citation, if ChatGPT provides a citation, that doesn't mean uh, this is actually uh, true or, or the author is correct. So how do we mitigate? How do we mitigate such impacts in, uh, in, in yeah, with ChatGPT? This is for educators. So first of all, we need to put, we need to place a spin limit. We need to place a spin limit, and this is through uh, AI plagiarism detection tools. I know nowadays there's zero GPT, and Germany is working with something right now. Uh, I think it's important to determine what percentage of AI generated, uh, what, what percentage of AI has generated uh, students' essays. Just to avoid that we have 100% of AI uh, plagiarism. So in that sense, it's important that as educators we define what is a what is a good percentage. I don't have that answer yet, but it's something important that we want to talk about. Uh, we want to design alternative assessments. I think educators, we need to surrender the idea of asking short questions or factual questions. What is this? What are the properties of this? Enumerate this. I think we need to abandon that concept because that is so accessible to students that we're actually not making them think. Okay? We need to abandon, and some ideas are project-based assessments in which students connect with their problems, with their real problems, and use the conceptual framework that they're using in the classroom to connect and bridge possible solutions of how to uh, overcome on their own context. I think that is important. Or presentations where students are exposed to talk about their ideas and not only submitting passively an essay. We need to emphasize on academic integrity. And I think this is a conversation that needs to go along everyone uh, every stakeholder in education, in the sense that we need to discuss what is the role of AI or ChatGPT in our classroom. We need to embed it. It's coming. Uh, you, know, want it, you want it or not, it's coming. So, how are we going to be dealing with AI? Are we going to prohibit it? Are we going to embed it in our classroom? How is that going to work? And we need to talk with students. They need to be conscious that um, if you just rely on ChatGPT, that is academic dishonesty. And they need to be of that. Pretend, students, how do we mitigate those effects, the, the learning effects in uh, ChatGPT? First of all, enhance those soft human skills that ChatGPT cannot reach. And I'm talking about critical thinking, I'm talking about ill structured problem solving, I'm talking about conflict management, I'm talking about leadership, teamwork, creativity. Those are human aspects that ChatGPT cannot reach that we can embed in our assessments, in our learning activities, so that students just focus on that. They focus on the skills, they, they attach their knowledge, and they integrate it with these soft skills. They gain practical experiences. Experiential learning is the way to go. And also, um, my big message for all of you who are learners, you want to embrace a learning mindset. You want to learn how to learn, okay? And that involves, yes, you, you gotta learn how to learn. It's a learning causes struggle. It's a natural struggle. You struggle with, with learning, and that is okay. Uh, it's part of the process. So in conclusion, uh, for educators, the world is not what it was. The teaching methods that we have uh, won't will, will work. If you if you keep a hold of those methods. It, 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 won't, it won't affect our students. So you want to evolve, you want to invent new technologies so that we can give them a better shot. Learners, you're not competing against humans uh, alone. The job market is different. You'll be competing against uh, AI capabilities. So embrace those human skills, embrace learning, and you will never be replaced by AI. Thank you.